So today, we're going to be doing a project video. And it's going to be about all my projects. If you like this video, like, and subscribe. I really don't give a shit if you like it. Just subscribe, please. Each one of these projects is going to take a decent amount of time. We're going to have smaller projects within those, you know, in between these videos. That way we can kind of keep things going. This doom buggy has been whooping our asses parts wise and fitment wise. That's why we're doing this video today to kind of get some plans for the future of my projects. So without further ado, let's get out to it. First one we're going to talk about is the Bronco. The Bronco and my green Jeep are kind of like daily drivers. So the goal is to keep those at least one running well and driving well. That way I have something to drive. So our main goal with the Bronco, you just got kind of a little list of like the first few things we want to do. Stereo, I want to get some better carpet in here because the rear is all pretty much from here to here is the only place that has carpet for some reason. The kid that owned it before me really rip this thing up. I want to get some carpet in the back or at least some rubberized mats in the back. Get some carpet under the front. I'm probably gonna have to tear it all the way out and put new carpet in. I'd like to sound deaden this. All these panels and the doors and the floor. That comes in with the stereo. I'd like to put a nice stereo system in here. I have a rack for the back halfway built that I'm gonna have an amp rack up high. That way the amps are up and out of the way and they keeps them from overheating. There's not really storage under the seats or anything to put an amp in there, so it's the best place I could think of to put an amp. At some point, we might do a solid axle swap on this, do a Dana 44 shortened, shortened width Dana 44 in the front, and probably just keep the rear 8.8. .8. This has got the old uh, Ranger axles in it, so it's a Dana 35 equivalent front axle with a Ford 8.8, .8, 373 gears, just kind of run of the mill. Running on these 33s, it does okay, but I'd like to give it some more power, so we might at some point do a 4.0 swap to a Ford Explorer 4.0. Just depends on how far I want to take this thing and, and how, how much time I have to do all of it. The rear tire carrier on this. So it had a rear tire carrier, but I had it swung open in the carport area I have. But I had it open, backed up, didn't realize it was open, and it just bink and popped off. So at some point, I'm going to weld that back on. I just got to get a TIG welder and we'll get that put back on. Get a nice 33 inch tire with matching wheel back here. I think that'll be pretty sweet. Also, I wanna do a short throw shifter and lengthen the shifter, bring it up higher and back a little bit more. It's a little far forward for my little tiny baby arms. And so I'd like to bring it up and back. That way it's more comfortable. I 3D printed a, a cup holder. Problem is this is in first. When you put it in second and fourth, it hits your drink. So I'd like to bring this maybe up around here. And so when you bring it up, it's gonna lengthen the stroke of the shifting pattern. So I'd like to make a little step up for a short shifter down here that bolts onto the transmission housing and raises it up. That way we get kind of the same distance between first and second, third and fourth and everything, but it's up higher. So that's gonna be another project with this guy. See here, they like cut the carpet here and took everything out from the, you know, from that point forward. And they did the same in the back end. So I don't know why they did that. I do know that this had a bad heater core when I got it. So I'm, I'm assuming carpet was all disgusting from that heater core dripping water on it and it just sitting, probably got all moldy. So they just cut the carpet out. So I fixed the heater core and now I gotta put brand new carpet in this thing. So that'll be fun. This is uh, one of the Jeeps I have. I have another Jeep in the back we'll go over in just a minute. This one, don't really have any crazy plans for this is kind of like just a everyday driving wheeler kind of rig not going to put a ton of money into it probably going to put a uh, sub and maybe a four channel inline amp in this just something quick and then uh, probably just tighten up this the suspension um, it makes a lot of noise in the front end so we got to track down what that is i've lifted it up and checked the wheel bearings and tie rods and everything seems tight so not sure where we're getting all that clinking clinking from but we'll get to that eventually we might throw some frame stiffeners on this and maybe a new engine someday when this one blows it's already got a six inch lift and 35s and uh long travel six inch lift so it's in pretty good shape the engine doesn't run great when you get low on the 
fuel for some reason when the fuel tank is just at needing to get gas it acts like there's water in it so we might drop the tank put a new tank in or clean this tank out might have some water sitting on the top that it's getting in there because as soon as you fill it up it runs fine so i don't know what's going on with it a little bit of backstory on this thing this was my buddy's uh from the marine corps he was wanting to get rid of it because it's just horrible on gas lives in socal so i took it off his hands he gave me a really good deal for it. I think I paid like three grand for it. I'm just gonna keep it around because it's fairly sentimental to me. We did a lot of stuff in it, so this is a good one to keep around. Motherfucker. A little bit of backstory on this truck. I bought this from my, he's like a second uncle, a second twice removed, I don't know, he's family on my stepdad's side. This was bought by my great grandpa and then sold to his brother my great grandpa bought this i think and then sold it to his nephew it's been in the family for a while so i'm gonna keep this thing around i got it for a steal i got this with the camper in the back for 1200 bucks we put a six inch lift on it and some wheels and tires these wheels and tires are geolander xmt's and the wheels are some like cjc off-road custom paint job wheel method doesn't offer this paint color this is a cjc specific from what i know they look really nice and then obviously we've been working on body work we got to get this all cleaned up this whole section right here used to be pushed into about here so i cut it out cut all the rod out and the nastiness put a new fender piece on i found here there's some cracks so i went to town with the grinder and figured out that this is old bondo that we need to grind out and rebondo so this whole section right here needs to get rebondoed. It is what it is. There's no bondo back here, but there is some some little dings right here that I was going to fill in. So we'll get this thing all cleaned up. The only other spots that we need to really address, back of the cab corners are in good shape rot-wise. This one's got a nice big old ding in it, so we'll have to get in there and try to get that out. If not, just fill it with bondo. It'll be fine. The front, however, as you can see, is growing some vegetation. It's moss. You can tell by the way it is. I think the plan is to take this whole fender and throw it away. LMC truck has a, an option to buy pretty much from here down on a fender. You cut that out and put this in. I don't have the patience to do that. So I think the better option, it's only like 50 bucks extra to get the whole fender. So, cause I have to get it for the back and for the front here. Cause the front has already been bondoed. You can see it's pretty rotted. My finger should not go in there. That is a no-go. We're just gonna do new fenders and we're gonna take all this trim off and I think we're gonna wrap it. We might do a single tone, single color wrap. We might do a two-tone wrap, kind of follow what this used to have. When it comes to the engine, this thing's got a 350 small block with a TH350 transmission. We gotta rebuild the transmission. The engine runs great. It's got a slight exhaust leak that we need to address it's not really a problem power or performance wise. It's really just annoying. It makes a high pitch like puffing sound. It's really annoying. But other than that, this thing is in pretty good shape. The front brakes need to be figured out. I think it's a proportioning valve problem where it's sending all the power to the back for the braking. This thing is four wheel drive all the time. It's either four high or four low or four high lock or four low lock. I don't know what the difference is, but I can't ever seem to get it to work correctly. So hopefully when we get that transmission out, we can get the linkage figured out for the transfer case. For the interior of this thing, I actually got really lucky. It's in pretty damn good condition. Aside from the driver door and a few small cracks on the, on the dash. I'll probably leave the dash, leave the carpet, leave the seat for now. I'll, I'm gonna get the driver door fixed up and then I'm gonna do stereo. There's a company that makes old looking two knob stereos for these that way you don't have to cut the dash out keep the stock dash i will eventually be sprucing up the rest of the interior but i think once i get that door card to the same level that the passenger door card is in it'll be good enough for driving around in a cruise and that's the whole point of this thing is to drive it as like a little cruise truck to go on cruises around town or cars of coffee most important thing is if it looks cool and sounds good, it doesn't matter if it runs, like, if it drives well or if it's going to fall apart. 
as long as the engine sounds cool and the stereo sounds cool, that's really all that matters. This is my 1997 F-250. It's a crew cab short bed, so pretty hard to find these kind of trucks. They don't really come in crew cab and the short bed. Most of the time, all you find is extended cab long beds or extended cab short beds. It's pretty hard to find the four door with the short bed. Really, the only things that we need to fix up with this is I gotta fix some of the window seals. The engine has some pretty gnarly oil leaks. It runs great. It's got 320,000 miles on it. It runs really good, but you gotta fill it up with oil all the time because it's just pissing out of it. So we're gonna clean up the engine, maybe slap a bigger turbo on there eventually. And then I do wanna work on the body on this too when I get around to it. I'd like to just get a whole new bed for it and then just fix the panels. Like it's got some dents and dings pretty much everywhere. So we'll just eventually clean it all up, get it looking nice, lift it, maybe put some 37s under it. It just depends on what, what we're feeling and where we're at with it. Next, we're gonna to touch on the biggest piece of shit we have. It's not even mine. It's, uh, it's my cameraman's, but we are gonna do some work on this thing. It's the newest truck on the lot we have, the newest thing. It's in pretty good shape. He got a killer deal on it. It runs good, drives good, handles well. Uh, all we really wanna do is some lifting tires to it. You know, get it, get it sitting level get it sitting higher um, just for some slight off-roading just so we can keep up with me and wherever we're going um, that way we can have a vehicle that we can rely on to not break down when I'm driving some old shit box headlights tail lights he wants to do some LEDs we're probably gonna run some tiny monsters in these front headlights those things are primo I got them in the Bronco I got them in the f-250 and those things make it to where you don't even need light bars. They're pretty awesome. He also wants to get rid of all this chrome, which is okay because you can see right here, it's chipping a little bit. It's not really that bad, but we just kind of want to black this thing out, make it look a little better. This is my 1983 F-150. It's got a 302 small block with a four speed manual transmission in it. Um, it's a bull nose, really good looking pickup. I love the way that these bull noses look. Uh, I think our only goal with, th with this thing is A, we're going to take out the engine, put that in the Ranger, which we'll go over more when we get onto the Ranger. And then this engine has a Edelbrock EFI direct port injection kit on it that I put on. It's pretty sweet. Turns it from a carbureted engine into a direct port injection EFI. And it looks pretty cool too. The interior on this thing is not great. The outside isn't great. The well, nothing about it's really great. It's got some used tires with some used wheels. Oh no, I bought those wheels new when I got these tires for it. I think our main goal with this is get the engine out and get that into the Ranger. And then down the line, what I wanna do with this is get a 454 or a 460 or an LS and make this slam it, make it a drag truck. I think that would be a pretty cool little farm pickup kind of build to do. This is my other Jeep that I have. It's sitting on 44 inch tires, kind of, what's left of them. I think the main goal for this guy is to get it to turn it into a rock crawler. I got this thing for 500 bucks. That's why it's in the shape that it's in. I'm not super worried about getting it running or having it be super nice. This will eventually be a rig that we'll take to like King of Hammers or just any rock crawling event. That's gonna be this, this guy's main goal. Back here, I'm just gonna do a quick overview of all these. This one in particular, my grandpa built, and this was the video that has like 300 something thousand views on my channel of me driving this thing to high school. I was talking to a girl and she said that I wouldn't do it, so I did it, and that's why I did that video. That is a Yamaha snowmobile that I got with this Polaris Triple. I got both of those for 500 bucks. That one runs, got it running last year, never took it out. I gotta get my cameraman to get a snowmobile Hopefully this next winter he'll get one because I'm going to buy him one. The Polaris Triple, we're going to take the engine out and we're going to probably put it in here. Put some suspension on this bad boy and get this kind of like a little single seater dune buggy kind of thing going. That quad over there is just parts. It's a parts quad. It's got suspension, hubs, transmission. So that one might go into something. It might just sit around until I decide to throw it away. I'm not 100% sure what I want to do with it. All right, let's go inside. It's fucking chilly out here. My nipples are hard. Ouch, my heart. This is my 1987 Ranger. 
I drove this in high school. Anybody that knows me knows this truck. This is my baby, and I'm glad I still own it. It caught on fire about two weeks or a week before I joined the Marine Corps, and it still ran, but pretty much from the transmission back, had to have all new wiring, all new hoses, lines, everything. So I think the plan is I have a solid axle Dana 44, shortened Dana 44 sitting in the back of this. I'm going to get a new either Dana 60 or Ford 8.8, maybe a Ford 9 inch, just depends on what comes up and what's easily available. I'm going to tear this engine out, I'm going to put in the 302 into here with the EFI kit and we are going to make this a five speed instead of a four speed. Uh, the four speed that has, that's, the four speed that's in the F-150 is kind of a piece of junk. It's like driving a tractor, can't use first gear, can't downshift. So it's two, three, four, three, two, two, you know, just this the whole time. You're going like this, just doing this every time you drive it. So it's super annoying to drive. The five speed that's in this is the same five speed that's in the Bronco. So I'll have a backup transmission transfer case for the Bronco, which will be nice. And then this engine is probably going to be made into a coffee table or something, some kind of accent piece, just because this was my first truck and I, I got this running mostly by myself, 99% 90, by myself. My dad would help me get this running. And by help me, I mean he would bitch at me until I just Googled it and figured it out myself. So the main goal for this, get that solid axle swap done, get the engine swap done. And then once we do those two things, it's restoration. So it's getting all new, everything, anything that's dented, dinged, or rotted, it's getting all new front to back. Um, I just really want to restore this thing from the ground up. And I'm probably going to do a slight lift with some 33s on this thing, not go too crazy. I'd just like to have this have a lot of suspension travel. That's the main goal. It's getting an all new interior with the custom sound system that we're going to do a really nice job on, do really nice boxes for some subs, do some custom fiberglass boxes for the six by eights, five by sevens, whatever in the back. This is my Jeep camper project. The whole goal of this thing is just to have a camper that I can throw on the Bronco, the Ranger, the GMC, whatever, F-250, and just have it be somewhat capable of off-roading with me, you know, kind of get to some sketchier spots than rather than a toy hauler kind of camper would be. Uh, on the other side, we have a deck. It folds out like that and lays flat about this high. And so I'll have a deck on that side. Sleeping area is from right here forward. I'm going to box the front end and then I'm going to build a wall here and then this whole back area with the rear hatch is going to be like a cooking slash storage area. I'm going to put a shower on the deck with a kind of a metal grate flooring or maybe some wood flooring that drains. That way you can have a shower in this thing. Um, it's going to get solar panels on the top. It's going to have a full inverter on the, the tongue. The tongue's going to get probably propane, power, and maybe a small generator. Might throw AC in this thing, might not, haven't decided yet. This thing is pretty much just to work, work on it as I have time. A lot of what I've been doing is getting all the body lines and all the, all the openings that exist still because the guy that was doing this before me cut it out to make it a wheeler. Didn't end up making it a off-roader, so I got to get a rear axle in this thing so I can get it moving around. Once I get the rear axle in, which I have out front, it'll be really nice because the receiver is on so we can tow it out of here, get it out of our way. I mean, this thing's pretty stout. It's got full box tubing here for rock sliders, and then it's got full box tubing for a frame. So it'll be pretty stout rig. Got to get it bolted down to the frame or get the frame bolted to the body and get it done. And pretty much the last project we have to go over vehicle wise is the doom buggy doom buggy obviously the goal get the engine running i haven't put that video out but i'll have a video out soon of what's going on with the engine we found just a few broken parts in it super great so we've been rebuilding that waiting on some more parts and then i'll start putting those videos out uh, it's probably going to be a two or three part build on this um, 
It's just getting parts because I don't know VWs well enough to, to buy the parts straight out. I just, I don't know enough. So if anybody has any VW guys that I can just call or hit up 24 seven, because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just winging it, all right? Give me a break. But yeah, get this thing going, get it out to the dunes, test it out, get the engine running, get it cleaned up, maybe a paint job. We gotta do electrical, maybe a paint job clean up the body panel on the side, maybe do some fenders, some long travel suspension. And that's really the whole premise of this project. This is my Bridgeport milling machine. It's a type two, I think. I'm not sure. I don't know shit about Bridgeports either. Big thing is I can't figure out what kind of Bridgeport this is because it has a CNC kit on it. I can't find any literature on the CNC part of this bridge port. Every bridge port type two that I find is just a regular, you know, just the head, the knee and the, the actual mill. It's got a big electrical box on the back and the side. Eventually I'm going to keep all these, obviously all these mounts. So motor mounts, this is a motor here, belt mounts here to control the, this axis motor goes here con to control the Z axis, the up and down. And then on that side, a motor controls the X axis or Y or whatever it controls. These two control the bed. This one controls the Z height. You can also adjust the knee of the mill to go up and down. So this is a pretty versatile machine. We just got to get it running. Problem with it is, is this spindle was the casing on it was broken. So you couldn't put the, the cover on, which the cover holds the electrical. It's just a mess. Makes a bunch of racket too. It does work. I did get it kicked on. And then the clutch on the top. The clutch mechanism is just like a snowmobile. It had some bad bearings. It had some bad fixturing, I guess. The piece that actually holds the back clutch assembly on was pushed out because it only had a little baby set screw. Pushed up and it was rubbing against this cover here. So I took that apart. And I think really to get this thing running, all I got to do is I ordered some hand wheels that we're going to put on the each axis. That way I can use hand wheels kind of like this guy to control everything for now. And then once we get that going, we'll end up making this a CNC project where we'll convert it back into a new style CNC mill. That way we can do some pretty cool stuff with it and still be able to use it by hand. That's pretty much it for this video. Very nice.